In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to find a vector that is perpendicular to a plane. The question reads, find a vector perpendicular to a plane that passes through the point P, Q, and R. Underneath, I've plotted these points, and it's important to notice that P, Q, and R are not vectors, they're points. So if we were to extend a line from the origin to each of these points, you would end up with a vector. But the point itself is simply a point in 3D space. So I want you to imagine that there is a plane, a 3D plane, that is passing through each of these points. And what we're looking for is a vector that is perpendicular to that 3D plane. What we can do is extend a line from point P to Q and another line from point P to R. This will generate two vectors that have X, Y, and Z components. And we can find these components by subtracting the coordinates of one point with the coordinates of the other. And eventually, we'll end up with two vectors. So if I want to find the vector connecting P to Q, I can write it out as P Q with an arrow is equal to the coordinates of P subtracted by the coordinates of Q. So 1 minus negative 2, that's 3. That'll be the x component of our vector. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And 6 minus minus 1 is 7. Now I'll do the same thing for P to R. I'll write it out as a vector P to R, and that's equal to the coordinates of P minus the coordinates of R. 1 minus 1 is 0. 4 minus negative 1, that's 5. And 6 minus 1 is 5. There's a reason why I'm finding the vectors that connect from point P to Q and from point P to R. Because now, if I find the cross product of these two vectors, that cross product will be perpendicular to both P to Q and the vector P to R. And if it's perpendicular to these two, then it's perpendicular to the plane itself. So let's go ahead and find out the cross product of these two vectors. We have P, Q times the vector that connects the point P to R. And of course, you can set this up like a determinant, a 3 by 3 determinant, as we did in one of our previous introductory videos to cross product. Or you can remember this formula. But there's actually a mnemonic to remembering this formula. And it involves writing out your vectors twice. Take, for example, this vector. We'll write it out as 3, negative 1, 7, 3, negative 1, 7, and this one twice, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5. And if you remember this pattern, you'll always remember this formula without having to memorize it. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, minus the product of these two numbers. So negative 5 minus 35 is negative 40. Let's do the same thing here. 7 times 0 is 0, minus 15 is negative 15. 3 times 5 is 15, minus the product of these two, which is 0, we end up with 15. So this vector, with the x, y, and z components of negative 40, negative 15, and 15, is perpendicular to a plane that passes through these two points. Interestingly, if you multiply it by a non-zero scalar quantity, that vector 2 will be perpendicular. So I'm going to reduce this down. What number? is equally divisible into all three, the number five. So we can write this as negative eight, negative three, and positive three. That vector as well is perpendicular to this plane. And there you have it. That is how to find a vector perpendicular to a plane using the cross product.